Welcome to the TDM Challenger series. Today we'll be talking about joining identifiers to create a unique composite key. Firstly, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Niraj Kawal and I'm a Senior Solutions Consultant here at TDM. So why is this important? Well, I've had a growing number of people ask me how they can ensure the uniqueness of their user identifiers, especially in a situation whereby an identifier they're using is shared by more than one person. So a common trend these days, and an example I'd like to share, is whereby an email address is shared with the husband and the wife. It's very difficult to tailor one-to-one -one communications and track these as two individual users. Telium can solve this problem by combining it with an additional identifier. So for example, an account number, or a customer ID. In the UK, by law, banks must send electronic statements to both individuals who share the same email address. And so that's a very manual and laborious process. And so what Telium can do within our Universal Data Hub is combine both those identifiers to create a unique composite key, which can be used to tailor one-to-one -one communications and track these individuals separately. So what I'm about to show you is how we are going to create this composite key. We're going to join two identifiers and first we're going to create them as string attributes. Then we're going to use the joint attributes enrichment to combine both these string attributes. Once that is combined, then we'll convert that into a visitor ID and voila, you're done, you have your composite key. I'm now in the Universal Data Hub and I'm in the Attributes section. Attributes are rich data values that are fueled by event data from your data layer and from omnichannel sources such as offline files and inbound API requests. Today, I'll be focusing on Vista attributes. There are an assortment of data types to select but I'm going to select a string value for now. I'm now going to enter email address as my first identifier as a string value. And you'll notice we can add enrichments to manipulate this. So the first one I'm going to select is set string. And this allows us to manipulate it to pull in the event attribute customer email directly from the data layer. Now in the same fashion, I'm going to use this to create the second ID for my composite key. Again, I select string. I'm going to call it customer ID this time. I come to my enrichments. And then I search for another of an attribute, for example, customer ID. Click finish. So now you'll see we've got two string attributes that have been created. So what I can now do is I can combine these to create my composite key as a string value. This will utilize another enrichment. So I'll come to string, I'll select this here, and I'm gonna use a join value enrichment. I'm gonna call this my composite key. I'm going to select the join attributes enrichment. So from here now, I can find the email address string value I created beforehand, and then I can combine it with any number of other attributes I like. So this can, as you can see, this can be used in a number of different ways, but this is just one example. And then I add a delimiter, so I'll add a dash there as a way to separate those two. Click finish and that's done. So I've created my string value as a composite key. Now it's time to create this as a visitor ID and this is what we'll use to make that an ID that we use for stitching and to associate to a visitor record to an actual individual user. So again I come back up to my attributes I'm on my visitor attributes again. 
and this time I come down to my visitor ID. So we can now store this as a unique identifier as the description states. From here now, I can call it my composite key, email plus customer ID, add enrichment, it's already set to that, and done. You now have your composite key created. This will be your way to uniquely identify and personalize to individuals who share the same identifier. Finally, thank you so much for viewing this video on how to create a composite ID. If you have a challenge of your own you'd like to share, you can visit team.com forward slash challenge.